Welcome back. In our previous video, we solved right triangles and we had the angle measure and we were using that to find one of the other sides. We used our trig functions to find one of the sides of a triangle given an angle and a side. So we know that the sine, cosine, and tangent commands are the commands that ask the calculator for the length of a side because we already know the ratio. The calculator knows the ratio and it knows the angle. Okay, so we, when we have sine, cosine, and tangent, we know the angle and we want to find the length of the side. Well now, in these sample problems, we're going to be given two sides and we're going to want to find the angle. Okay, so this is a little bit different. So you may have noticed on your calculator above the sine, cosine, and tangent keys, you'll see this sine negative one, cosine negative one, tangent negative one. Well, that's not the reciprocal of sine, cosine, and tangent. That's not the cosecant, secant, and cotangent keys. That's called the arc sine and the arc cosine and the arc tangent. Those are the commands that give us the measurement of the angle. So that must mean that we know the entire ratio for sine or cosine or tangent. We must know two of the sides, but now we want to find the angle. So the sine negative one, cosine negative one, tangent negative one, that's us essentially saying, hey, calculator, I've got the lengths of two sides. I know the ratio, but I need to know the measure of the angle. So when we're looking for an angle, that's the command we use. So let's make sure our calculator is in degree mode. And it is still in degree mode left over from previously. So that is Excellent, so we can clear out of there, and we are ready to go. So again, Chief Sokotoa is gonna help us out here. We're gonna need to know that the sine of an angle is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, and the tangent is the opposite over adjacent. And you may recall our reciprocal functions as well. I don't think we're going to be using those at this time, but something to be aware of. So let's take a look at our first sample problem. Given the lengths of sides A and B, find the measure of angle B. So if A is 10 and B is 15 and we want to find angle B. So that's our theta or our unknown. Well, our reference angle is B, and we have the opposite and the adjacent. So we need a trig function that involves opposite and adjacent. Well, that's tangent. So the tangent of angle B equals 15 over 10. And if you want, you can go ahead and reduce that. The tangent of angle B equals three over two. And this is ready to go. We can input this into our calculator. We have the ratio, but I need the angle. So I would input tangent negative one, parentheses three over two. This I would say is calculator ready for. Make a note of that. And let's go to our calculator. So second tangent, tangent negative one of three divided by two, I suppose you could use the fraction or the decimal 1.5, hit enter. And so now we know this angle, angle B is 56 point, yeah, we'll call it three one degrees. In our second sample problem, given the lengths of the sides C and B, calculate the measure of angle A. So we want to find A. We know C is 
10 and B is 8. So we're working from angle A. So we have the adjacent and the hypotenuse, and that would be cosine. So katoa tells us to use cosine. So the cosine of angle A is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, 8 over 10. So the cosine of angle A equals 4 fifths, or 0.8, if you will. So we can go to our calculator and input cosine negative 1. We could use the decimal 0.8, or we could use the fraction 4 fifths. So second cosine 0.8. And let's, for kicks, we'll use our fraction, second cosine, 4 divided by 5. And how about that? We get the exact same thing both times, 36.87 degrees for the measure of angle A. In fact, you may may have noticed that is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So apparently the angles in a 3, 4, 5 are 36.87 and angle B must be 90 minus that. So what would that be? 43.13 degrees. Let's do another one, a word problem. A treasure chest is buried 19 feet below a tree stump. So tree stump is up on the ground. So we have this tree stump. Got a tree stump here. And if we go 19 feet down, we've got our treasure. Okay. So there's our stump, here's our treasure. If you begin to dig 30 feet from the stump, at what angle must you dig to recover the treasure? So let's head this way, 30 feet, and now I need to dig to get at the treasure. So the question is, What's this angle between the ground and the angle at which I must dig to get to the treasure? So, hmm, from my angle, I have an opposite and I have an adjacent. So, opposite and adjacent, that is tangent. So, the tangent of what angle, we'll just call our angle theta. You'll see that a lot in trig is the opposite over the adjacent, so 19 over 30. That's already reduced, so second tangent, 19 divided by 30. I don't even have to figure out what that decimal is. The calculator will do it for me, and we will dig at 32.35 degrees. So the measure of that angle is 32.35. And our final sample problem, a 40 foot long ladder reaches 28 feet high on a building. So going up 28 feet high on a building and we've got our ladder. which is 40 feet long. So there's our ladder. And our building. Fortunately, this is not the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So all our buildings form a right angle with the ground. At what angle does the ladder make with the ground? So the ladder makes with the ground. The ground is here. So we want to find this. This is our reference angle. We want to find 
this angle theta. So from theta, I have an opposite and a hypotenuse. My reference angle here, so I have opposite and hypotenuse, so that's sine. So the sine of some angle theta equals 28 over 40. So the sine of theta is equal to 7 over 10. So we'll do second sine, right? Hey, calculator, I've got the ratio. I need the angle of 0.7. And I get 44.43 degrees. So 44.43. Degrees. And there are some sample problems for calculating the angles using our trig functions, and we will see you in class.